All right, boys and girls, let's get settled. Um, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, do that. Um, di let's distribute the blue shit. Do we have anyone interesting on Jabber? Yeah, let's, um, let's get organized. Since I'm the only one here today, Klaus is doing other things. I, need, uh, I really need volunteers to help me with shit. And among other things, getting some notes taken and uh, somebody to look at Jabber. Okay, thanks, Jim. Somebody take notes. Please. Thank you. Excellent. Um, all right, then. So we got an hour. Better make uh, the most of it. You've all seen the note well. Um, and this is our primary focus today. The, the big red splotches on the, the, um, the data tracker page for our working group that says that we have uh, one document that's been sitting in the RSC editor's queues for, for 1,027 days, right? The other is only 329 days, right? This we got to fix. Um, the, 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 the stuff that's holding this up is, of course, AAA SAML. Uh, but we also have the UI draft, UI consideration drafts to get, um, get done. And so I, I crafted a, an agenda to get us as much work as possible on those two documents. There is one more, um, if we have time, I promised um, Stefan uh, to do a quick press on the credential forwarding delegation draft that he's done. Um, but my suggestion is that we quickly dispense with UI considerations in, in like three minutes and then move on to AAA SAML. Are you okay with that, Reese? Do you have any, can you like summarize the status of, of, of you? Um, I'm not sure if we have a microphone or something. Oh yeah, there we go. Hidden. Ah. In plain in view. Plain, in plain view. Oh. Um, 
Well, I read the document based on all the last feedback. Right. It's pretty much there now. I think there's a few more bits of feedback from Ken and someone else. I can't remember who. And Mark has, is providing some more comments now. Right. Um, I am as well. And Sam is. So can so we I'll, I'll, I'll do you do one more rev? Yeah, I'll do one more rev. I'll get that done in the next week or two. Just get it done. Yeah. And, uh, get it done this it. week. And we can do a working group last call before Friday. Wouldn't that be great? Depends on when I get the comments. Okay. Uh, would <laughs> would you, would you guys? I mean, and this is for a group for the working group. Uh, are we done there? I mean, can we do a, a working group last call after those comments, or does it need more rev? Sam. Yes, we, it's good. It's good. Good to go. Yeah, is that your assessment? Yeah. You basically agree with that, so basically, yeah. yeah. Okay. Fine. So next rev as quickly as humanly possible. Yep. I'll issue a working group last call, uh, and then we can we can be uh, we can be in write up stage before uh, before September. Yeah, that'd be fine. Okay. Yep. All right. Um, and this actually has been fairly well reviewed now recently, so you know, um, it's not too shabby. All right. Um, so AAA Samuel, go. Uh, <laughs> let me let me just bring up your slides. Um, you tell me when to flip. Uh, well, as, uh, as you probably know, the main issue we have with this draft so far is that we need a mapping or a binding between the SAML name and the AAA name when the policy is applied based on SAML names. And I have a preliminary proposal that I sent to the mailing list uh, just today with a definition of two different road descriptor types. Uh, radius IDP descriptor and radius RP descriptor, and the, the definition of uh, radius URI scheme that, as Sam pointed out, uh, might uh, might need to be avoided. Um, well, in for sake of uh, simplicity. And uh, well, in addition of this, next. We have other relevant issues, but, but uh, minor degree issues that uh, most of them were raised by Jim uh, in our last of the conference, which was uh, that with the new name of the entities that I did, uh, trying to homo homogenize AFAP and the SAML names that were in the previous version of the documents, we should include a table at the beginning of the document as the one included into the architecture of AFVAP. And I already did done this, uh, done this sorry, in a version I have in my computer, waiting for to be completed, to be submitted. Uh, Jim also proposed to change the name of SAML message attribute to the SAML protocol. It, because uh, SAML message was somehow com uh, confusion with uh, the radius message and if message, etc. There is a question for for Ruiz. Uh, yeah. Sorry. <laughs> Are domain-only name representations allowed in the network access identifier name identifier format? I mean, uh, in section five of this document describes this uh, network access identifier name identifier format, which is a uh, format to, to, so are domain only name representation allowed for this? No, uh, no. For this, sometimes the IDP doesn't provide the full name of the user to the RP. So it's possible to use the at domain or at real uh, notation. It's uh, NAI about it. Yeah, it does. But, okay. We still have that here. <laughs> it is. It's, 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 yeah, it, it is. It is. It is. Yes. The question is, should we allow it in AAA SAML? Yeah. Otherwise, you, we have to explicitly forbid it. And there's uh, a question that uh, should maybe should be for Scott or any other SAML expert, more than me, obviously. Should section 6.1 confirmation methods identifiers also refer to the ones in section 8.1? This was uh, one of your 
yeah. uh, comments, uh, Jim. So if you want to provide more information. I have an answer for this. And I don't remember what it was. No, no, no. I actually had a conversation with Scott about this. Right. And I got an answer for it. And I have to actually go back in my mail bag and find out what it was. OK. Yes. I'm going to describe uh, the proposal for yeah. Describing the AAA names into SAML metadata. But my proposal is to uh, define this radius IDP descriptor, descriptor element and uh, including a radius IDP service element, which is actually an endpoint type with the binding to the URM ITF params of bindings radius. And the location should be an URI naming the AAA IDP entity. For the RP, I have a similar thing, but uh, obviously the location would be an URI naming the AAA RP element. Both are very similar in the format, but we need both of them because of the semantic of the own name. We need one is describing an IDP and the other one is describing an RP. This is similar of what already exists for the web single sign on profiles in SAML. Next. And this was my proposal to name AAA entities using an URI, which some didn't like. Uh, it was, uh, well, in Radius, we have uh, three different possibilities to name an RP. The first one is using the IP address. The second one is using the NAS identifier attribute. And the third one is using the four attributes described in RFC 7055. So I defined an URI for each one of them, which uh, this is specific format. And the last part of the URI would be the actual value of the identifier for the AAA entity. For the IDP, we don't have an attribute to name a radius attribute to name the IDP, but we can assume, or it's usually assumed, that the real part of the nine is the uh, IDP name. So we could take that and use this URI to name the, the IDP entity. As I told in my, in my mail, in the mail list, these uh, URIs are examples. I, I don't know if we are going to use that prefix or a different one. That's the important part is that we can have this suffix with this specific information. And uh, well, that's all from my part, and we can start with the discussion. Ah, uh, uh, sorry. Yes, I, I have this example. <laughs> so if uh, well, in this example, you can see uh, the whole thing, the entity descriptor for a specific. Uh, a specific IDP, uh, we have this uh, entity ID with the name, the summon name, and then we have the radius IDP descriptor with the radius IDP service with the location indicating the name, the AAA name for this IDP. And I have the same example for, for the RP naming an ID, uh, sorry, for, for an IDP naming an RP in the next slide. It's very similar, actually. It's more difficult to explain. So, hi, Sam Herman. First of all, I'd like to say great, uh, a real heartfelt thanks to, to Alejandro for moving this forward. This has been stuck for at least a year, I think, if not longer. And um, no, well, no, that's no, yeah, yeah, that's I, not quite true. I, I, like, but but basically, maybe around 600 days or so. And um, this is basically the kind of concrete proposal we need to make it move it forward. Uh -huh. What I propose that we do to, to focus this discussion is first, like there's the whole question of whether we can define a radius URI, but I'd like to defer that for a little bit and basically talk about kind of the structure of the metadata and stuff. And um, basically let's ignore the process issues surrounding registering a radius URI 
if we could do this, what's on the screen there now in the example, would we be happy with it? I'd like to answer that question first because I think it's going to be easier. And if the answer is yes, then we can focus on the process nitty gritty details. Um, but we basically know we have a solution and we're just dealing with process mess. But basically, I like comments from Reese, Leif, basically people who know SAML metadata. And it's like, is this basically what we're trying to do? Is this basically good? I mean, I, I'm not going to run up and down, but uh, I'll, I'll say it, it looks actually pretty close. Um, I'm wondering whether we actually need um, an, a role descriptor for this. Um, what else could we use? Um, the one already exists. You mean yeah. using the single sign-on uh, IDP? And, and with, with, with a different binding. But the question is whether that makes sense. In the, in the SAML metadata, uh, the single sign on IDP yeah. descriptor is specific for the web single sign on. Yeah, and you're absolutely right about that. Now, I think this is as close. This is pretty close, I think, actually. And it certainly does the right, the right thing for key to name binding for yeah. SAML, right? So, um, yeah. I don't. I don't see any major problems. Any other comments at that level? If not, I can explain my issue. <laughs> How slide back down so I can see the example. Um. There you go. Oh, actually, th that's a uh, that's an IDP metadata. You actually had one more slide. So this is example RP metadata. This is example um, IDP. Oh, this is an IDP uh, naming um, RP. Or referring to an RP. Uh, so actually, it says example. Yeah, it's it's WIP. So it's it says example IDP metadata, but this is actually our RP metadata. Yes. Anyway. Uh, um, yeah. So uh, you you want to speak to your uh, URI issue? Uh, left up. There you go. So practically speaking, if we try and register a radius URI scheme, it's going to be a lot of work. And if we try and register a radius URI scheme that doesn't actually involve like the hostname or IP address or port of a radius server, it's going to raise some eyebrows a lot. Um, so my only issue is one of process. Basically, I think if we do it this way, we're going to um, get um, get some. Uh, it will be hard to get this document published, and we will get to talk to the apps community a lot more than, than we wanted to, and we'll get to talk to Radix a lot more than we want to. Um, so I understand that location is a mandatory attribute in a, in a this is an, in an, in an endpoint, in in right? Mm -hmm. yes. Okay. Can we add extra attributes? Let me, ch let me check. Yeah, basically what I'm hoping we can do is specify a placeholder URI that we, we for today that basically is, no, we're not telling you how to get there, but that if there's a radius URI defined in the future, we could replace it with. Um, and then just put this in other attributes. Like, I mean, basically we can have our URN for, no, really, you don't need to know. Hmm. Because what the URI he has, Alejandro has is not actually a location. Like, I mean. So um, the, the, the endpoint type, I'm mm -hmm. just reading the schema right now. The endpoint type has, um, the, the thing is they have the, the binding location are required. Right. And response location are, is optional, but then you can have, you can actually add local namespace Attributes. Defined attributes to okay. that. So, so what I, my proposal is that we define a URN that is um, basically um, that indicates that location is is context dependent. Um, I mean, or you know, like because so you're not actually define you actually don't you're not proposing defining an attribute you're proposing to to define a location that says no. Uh, no, uh, no, just a moment. I'm first of all proposing that we define a location that's no. 
And then we define two, an attribute for the um, NAI or for, and then an attribute for NAS ID and an attribute for the GSS name. Yeah, but how is that different from from defining? Oh, because that uh, gets you out of having to prefix stuff with an RFC. Uh, yeah, basic, well, basically that gets us out of defining a new URI. Um, and uh. oh, the other thing it allows us to do is in the future. If we ever decide we actually do want to tell you where the radius server is, like if someone comes up with a use case where they actually, you know, like want to give you, uh, want to do this with some sort of RATSEC thing, if they define that URI, then they can actually stick it in the location field like SAML intended. I, I mean, I think you, what your basic proposal is a, is a instead of get, getting beat up by the URI folks, you're going to get beat up by Scott and the and the Oasis folks. Well, <laughs> and it's just a pick, pick who you're going to get. Yeah, get but beat I actually, up. but I think that the thing is, uh, yes, but um, Scott is worse. No, no, is. Scott is not worse because I actually think I can sell him on this. Because the fact is, you don't need a location for this binding. That that's right. Um, uh, but what you're what you're doing is you're saying location something, you know, look over here for the actual location, right? That's no, I'm you're... saying you already know the location. There are plenty of cases in SAML where there are URNs that say you well, already know this. Okay, but then you don't need to define attributes that actually that give you other stuff, right? No, I do, because the location, because it's not the location that we care about for this finding. What we care about is the naming information, uh -huh. right? We actually care about the AAA name. The reason we want to define this endpoint uh, is not because we want to specify the location, because again, in his proposal, we don't actually have a location in the UI. Well, so so for that, you could just as well do an extension to the or to the role ex, use the extensibility mechanism in the uh, RDP descriptor type uh, role descriptor type, and you say. Here's some other stuff oh, associated with this. That's fine too. Think of a jig, right? You don't I, have I, to. I, I, but I guess. But why is it better to do it on the role descriptor rather than the endpoint descriptor? Um, you can avoid to use the, the endpoint type, the radius RP service at all if you yeah. don't need it. Oh, role descriptors don't have to have an endpoint. Um, I think uh, they do. I think no, no, no. Oh, really? It's not mandatory. I don't think so. so let's check that. Because if we don't need an endpoint, then let's just get rid of the endpoint and stick this in another in another element in role descriptor. Check the schema. Check the schema. And reading schema. Reading schema. Yes. Yeah, probably not. Yeah. I think you're, you're, so, think you're right. You define your own. Typically, I mean, IDP SSO descriptor, for instance, is just sort of the base stuff, mm -hmm. signature extensions, yada, yada. And then after that, you define, they def it defines its own set of things that it needs. And in this case, it, then it shouldn't be an endpoint. It should be something else. Would, would you be? Do you, would you know how to go forward with that, Alejandro? Like define something other than an endpoint to carry the name. I think so. Okay. Um, can we get comments on that? I'm very in favor. Uh, uh, Jim Shot. Um, I want to make clear. I want to get some clarification. Your actually is going to still carry a name. You're just not going to carry a location. It's just you're going to break the name up into a couple of other pieces. Yeah. Okay. Right. So for for this application, you the the location is implicit, which means that you don't have to talk about it in Simon method. Well, you, have to, you have to. I don't you have to bind other things to the key, right? Right. Yeah. You're much more worried about binding yeah. this name to a yeah. key than, right. than than where it happens yeah. to live. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. 
as an individual who knows Simon metadata, this seems fine to me. This will let us publish the document. <laughs> but I don't think we're getting out of doing a cross review in Oasis, in, in SSTC in some form. That's fine. I think we actually have to do, go do that. Yeah, I agree. Um, but I mean, we had to with this document already. Right? Yeah, it was in our charter. It, it's in our charter to do that. So, you know, we're. Um, so somebody want, I actually want to get a volunteer. Do you think Alejandro, do you have, um, are, you, are you already in the SSTC in the Oasis? You're not there. Uh, does anybody, I mean, I have, I'm nominally in the group, but I have never sort of spent any resources and I shouldn't really be pushing the draft, but somebody else who already have presence in the SSTC be willing to help Alejandro um, this to get cross review. The, the people who we, we could talk to about this is for instance, John Bradley, Nat, uh, Nate Klingenstein, um, Scott himself. I mean, we can talk to Scott and see if he'd be willing to help out to sort of get it on the get it on a call schedule. That's that's what needed, I think. Yeah, that was going to be my request as well. So see if we can, I I can take an AI personality to see if I can get Scott to help out and just do a handshake and you guys can figure it out. Um, but then when you have the next rev, right? Yeah. We, we show Scott the finished product. All right. Is this the only remaining issue with AAA SAML? Does that mean it gets fully unstuck after this? I think so. I think so. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> this is pretty good work. <laughs> so we finally know what we're using it for. That's excellent. Um, yeah. So, um, damn it, stop locking my screen. Um, so unless somebody wants to add anything here, we can, um, no. No. We can, but we actually can get, um, we can get, um, the, the, uh, unscheduled, the, the extra scheduled work. Um, so, um, Stefan, are you in the room? Oh, he isn't. All right. All right. <laughs> Stefan Paltrow. We did submit a draft and sort of sort of asked for time to present. That's why I assumed that he, he was in. The, <laughs> he was actually here. Do you want to talk about it? Yeah, yeah, I mean, I can. I'm not. I haven't. I'm not all that familiar with the draft, but I can basically. Um, is the event term. So the goal of this draft. A little bit more to your left. There you go. Um, okay. Oh, is there a video or something? Yes. Oh, okay. I didn't know that. Okay. Um, so the goal of this proposal is that um, as we've been deploying Adfab, we found that people, one of the big use cases we have is SSH. And people would like to be able to um, use Adfab as a way of kind of doing domain transitions. So you will go log into um, a system that is sort of the head end of a domain, like in the grid role. And you want to be able to then go from there and access other services using um, your identity. So it's very similar, I think, to the token exchange use case in OAuth, um, if I'm understanding their terminology correctly. Um, and this is um, becoming one of the big you know, customer requests as people are trying to actually use Adfab is they're saying, hey, there's not really a good way to do that. And so Stefan would like to put forward and come up with a way to do that. Alejandro did a, um, a proof of, was, 
Was it yours? Oh, I know it was on the chestnut ice. You did the delegation of them. No, no, no. Delegation? Oh, did I have a chestnut? Okay, so so most of the chestnut um, put together a proof of concept for this, um, where basically you get an ETL exponential back from a radius surface that you can use um, for delegation. And again, factor is very similar um, in concept to a script down of token exchange. Um, although, you know, of course, the messages are very different because it's a different protocol. Um, and then you are, and you can use that for figure out how our operations are done. Um, I, I don't think it's really interesting to focus on the details at this point. I think the interesting question is whether you get enough people to do the work. Um, it's, you know, it's just going to be folks from the guest internal security. Probably we would need more tiers to be able to get enough of the tiers to do the project. So I guess the question is whether, you know, first of all, whether people see the and understand the need for this. Um, and if so, whether we can get enough reviewers and authors, um, and whether anyone's interested in implementing um, to drive this in a lot of ways. And I think that's, that's basically what we're going to discuss. Is that good, Evan? Is that All right. Does anybody in, in this room feel they, they had would will will have resources and cycles to work on something like this? Sam is waving his I hand. I mean, as a, as a reviewer, not as an author. No, no, understood. Um, happy to read. All right. So, and this sort of gets us to the point of um, where where does the working group go? And you know, I'm happy to see that our chair is in the room. Or, or AD is in the room, so we can talk about next steps. So there have been at least two. Um, oh, do you want to say something? Oh, cool. And there is another piece of work potentially which Adam might be doing around ephemeral keying. Right. I was actually going to mention a ephemeral keying, and and th that's. So we have sort of two things that have come up during deployment. One of them is ephemeral keying. The other is uh, uh, credential delegation, and um, you know, if I mean, there still seems to be active work in this field, and it would be a shame not to sort of pursue and fi finalize some of this stuff. Um, so um, I don't know what 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 do you think, um, Stephen, about you know, in terms of resources for for the ITF keeping Abfab around for a little bit to do that. That would that would you be comfortable with a recharger if it contained a couple of extension proposals? Or do you want to get rid of us desperately? Stephen Brown, uh, not desperately. Um, <laughs> so I guess if we finish what we have, yeah, um, and then reach out, or, uh, yeah, I'm sure. We, um, yeah, but I, I'd be keen to not have another thousand day. No, no we we promise, no. we promise, right? And we'll never do this again. Um, but so what we're looking at, I think, then is an agreement to. Make sure that by um, by Yokohama we have all it's all it's a clean right it's a clean slate everything's well through the it should be through the RC editors queue even I, um, there's no reason for us not to be finished with our current work by Yokohama um, and I'm not sure if there is enough people actually coming to Yokohama to have a meeting there um, we could just postpone. Our recharter discussion until the next ITF meeting, possibly. Uh, but it sort of depends. This is a small group. It depends on your availability. So, you know, are enough people coming to Yokohama? Or could they, could you if there was an ABFAB meeting? So, I was pointing out that after Yokohama, it's Buenos Aires, so that yep. may have travel issues too. Yep. Oh. I mean, you don't have to meet. You might have to meet. We don't have to meet, but it helps to have a have a meeting if you're judging, you know, people's interest and and sort of focus. Right? Oh, you mean for for recharging? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Uh, we could potentially have a interim or virtual interim. We could do that. Yeah. 
Sure. I mean, I, I mean, I guess for rechartering, um, uh, you know, I mean, doing it in such a way that we kind of recharter for, um, you know, and then try and get some work done on the list or with some interims or retro interims, um, and maybe with some kind of timer. And if the timer goes yeah. off, then maybe you know, we it's use possible to aid and sponsor it. stuff. Yeah. Um, you know, if you have document, like if you have a document or something that's mm -hmm. that you want to get done. Maybe you could decide to close the working group, and if it's ready, then just AD sponsor it and right. go from there. That's right. an option. But right. Yeah. The only concern is that we don't just go off into the endless future. Yeah. It, not another cat. Um, no. no. Uh, so okay. Um, I guess we have consensus. Then we'll try. We'll finish our stuff. Finish what's on our plate, and then go for an, um, an, a virtual interim meeting, pro probably in the form of a conf call or something like that. And uh, we'll see where we are. Um, I have nothing else. Does anybody else have anything? This is open mic time. Sure. Yeah, any updates from Moonshot would be great. Uh, Mark Donnelly, Painless Security. Um, uh, over the course of the last uh, uh, six months or so, we've uh, uh, finished a, um, a a plugin or an extension for uh, Chrome and for Firefox that allows um, you to communicate with a, an Apache module, all of which we've written, uh, that does GSS um, authentication. Uh, through uh, uh, web APIs or web, web calls. Uh, so we actually have a, a full, uh, in its set context, uh, uh, round trip, uh, a full uh, uh, what, series of round trips through the GSS uh, that pull up the uh, Moonshot Identity Selector, uh, lets you, uh, let you grab the identity, communicate it through, and authenticate through to the uh, uh, web. Um, that is uh, available on the Moonshot a uh, uh, Git repository for anybody who's interested in it. Cool. Very nice. A, a question for about this: uh, Is the Apache module module uh, exporting the attributes through environment variables? <laughs> because I would like to have that. So, no, the Apache module makes the GSS context available to the Apache request. Um, so any other Apache module can do whatever it wants in terms of GSS. Um, we would love to take get a patch from someone to export the attributes to their environment variables, um, or you know another. Um, I mean that would be really awesome. Or another way to do this might be to integrate into SHIB. Um, but uh, basically, it does not do it today. We would love to get to it. It's an open source project. If anyone gets to it sooner, then it'll get done sooner. It's like it's basically BSD licensed except for the parts that are MIT licensed. All right. We're done. Um Yay. Oh. I guess there's one more thing to say one more thing. since the last I one more thing is. Just for those who don't know, since the last ITF we are now running a production service in the UK for the academic community based on Moonshot. Mm -hmm. So Actually doing something with this stuff, oh, very and nice. we're um, there's a giant project um, which is looking at make, turning this into a global thing oh, exactly. and turning it into a proper service. So, cool. Yep. All right. That's a wrap. Thank you very much. You send the notes to me. Ah, perfect. Thanks, everyone. Beer time.
Uh, I haven't seen it. <laughs> well, we've had three ICFs here now. You've never made it there at all? Uh, no, I have previously, yes. This, this time, I think I've got about 100 meters in the hotel somewhere. Yeah, we had one meeting in France where I essentially never left my hotel in the conference center. And, you know, I was complaining about the food, and people were like, you're in France. And I was like, yes, in France. You don't ask people to send sandwiches to a conference center. If you do, you get what you deserve. Hi, <laughs> Sam. How are you? Really well. Good. Um, this is being a lot of fun, you know. Um, <laughs> it was bizarre. What's this? Okay. Yes. Excellent. Nice. So we buying the private yacht and aircraft and all that stuff. <laughs> Looks like there are a lot of interesting security groups starting up. There's a lot of stuff going on. Yeah. Which is good. No, it's really good. I'm I'm looking forward to a couple of the buffs this 